Hello, and welcome back to Polytoots. I know in the last video I said that I was going to leave Shadograph alone, but uh, I'm a big fat liar. Um, I just remembered there was uh, there was something I was asked to do for work, and it was uh, essentially to generate um, a particle system where we use our own mesh, but that particle system had to fade. And I remembered that by default, um, this isn't p possible, um, at least not with a PBR setup. So I just want to show you what I mean real quick. Uh, I've just made this quick particle system here. Uh, this isn't a particle tutorial, so I'm sorry that I won't show you how to how to build this. But if you do, if you were to doing something like uh, changes to mesh, and I'm going to select the cupcake that we made in the 3D code tutorials. Uh, so I'll bring my emission count down because for some reason while I'm recording it seems to be stuttering a bit. A bit like me, way. Um, so if you can see what's happening here, uh, as the meshes begin to die, they they uh, they fade, and this is done with a c color over lifetime. So it's uh, it's just an alpha. That's set so in sort of the last, well, at the last twenty percent ish of this particle's life, it will fade the mesh. But obviously, this material isn't the one we need. We we have a cupcake model, and so we want to use the cupcake material. So then, now watch what happens. See what I mean? They just pop out of out of existence. Uh, the alpha is completely ignored. And even if you were to create your own sh shader where you just specify that it's transparent, um, that still won't be enough. Um, and it's for a very simple reason, and it's that the uh, the color and alpha of uh, particle systems um, they actually use the uh, the vertex coloring component, uh, which by default the uh, the PBR system doesn't have. So we need to make our own. Um, it is worth noting, uh, you could, depending on uh, the style of your game, like if you wanted flat colors, this uh, you could just use the uh, the particle materials themselves that are provided. So if I just say cupcake particle default, and I'll change this just to uh, particles alpha blended, and then I'll grab just my color map because again we can't use the metalness or the normals. Uh, let's put that color up. Alpha full. That seems a bit too bright. Weird. Uh, so if I were to come back to my particle system now, and if I were to just use this basic alpha blended particle, you see they do fade. Um, but these are a uh, full lit materials. So if you want to get PBR and uh, mesh p p particles to fade, uh, I will show you how to do that now. And it's quite simple. Uh, in fact, it's unbelievably simple. Uh, I'm going to be using Shadograph. Um, and if you're looking for how to install that, like if you haven't seen my last video, uh, go and see my last video or just type in Shadograph installation and there's 50 million other people that will t tell you how to do that. But um, we are going to just create, uh, I'll create a shader in here. Um, shader, I want to do the PBR graph because again we are making a uh, PBR material, we just want it to work with a particle system. So I'll just call this uh, PBR particle, capital A for some reason. Let it do its thing. Recording really seems to slow down my computer. I was spawning uh, about 800 of these before. Now bring it down to 30 and it's still a bit of a wreck. Uh, before we jump into this, I will create the material. Uh, get rid of that. So we have a shader and the material which has been propagated to it. So I'm just going to click twice on this. And 
first thing we want to do is set up our usual t textures so that we're using the uh, albedo, uh, normal, and metallic. So I'm just going to go and uh, fly through this. If you want to see sort of how to do this, go and watch the other video. I'm just going to, in the essence of saving time, I'll speed through it. And here I am wasting time explaining that. Anyway, anyway, I'm going to do it now. Uh, okay, so I've just set this up and there's one thing I'm not, I'm not sure if I mentioned it in my last video or not, but if you're trying to replicate the standard uh, Unity PBR material, uh, it's worth noting that the alpha channel of your metallic t texture is what's used for the s smoothness. And since my textures were saved with the standard material in mind, I need to uh, create that same s setup here. And essentially this is my or it will be my metallic texture. So I just want to hook the alpha, which is the A, into smoothness. And that will be that. So I'm just going to save this for now. And then I'll plug my textures into it. If I were to just go and place this on our particle system, we're going to have the same issue as before, and that they're just going to pop out of existence. Um, and there's plenty of reasons that you would want it to fade rather than to pop. Um, I guess for some reason, uh, well, a probably a very obvious reason, but people notice something blinking out of existence a lot more than they do a fade. So if you have a game where there's some sort of massive uh, particle debris falling down, whether it be sort of chunks of concrete or brick or Whatever it is, um, there's 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 a million things that you could do with particles. Uh, it's often better if you are planning to cull the assets, which in all likelihood you should. Um, it makes sense to do a fade rather than just have it blink out of existence. So I was saying before that we need to do this with vertex c coloring, and uh, I have to thank someone on the Unity forums for this because for the life of me. Uh, I couldn't work out how to do it. In Amplify, it's extremely easy. In Shader Forge, it's, it's extremely easy. But uh, I'll show you what I mean. So we're going to just put in the Vertex Color node. And it says here, Out 4, which means there are uh, four channels that it outputs to. Uh, channels might not be the right word. Essentially, it's just R, G, B, and A, similar to this. Except for with this Texture 2D, you have access to the RGB and A. And uh, I wasn't aware of how Shadograph sort of handled this. Uh, I was trying to sort of split it with um, channel masks and vector fours and whatnot, but it wasn't working. But so someone on, on the forums thankfully pointed me in the right direction and that the way that Shadograph handles these kind of things is just with a split node. So we just put this into that. And now, essentially, these two nodes are kind of the equivalent of this kind of thing. So it's a node which has access to uh, RGB and A. If you wanted to use all of them, obviously, you just you, you wouldn't use a split. Uh, and so all you have to do is hook your alpha of your v vertex color into the alpha channel and set your blend mode to transparent. So I'll hit save on that. And then they start to disappear. So that's it. I hope uh, I hope you learned something. There's probably other ways to do this. I'm sure someone in the comments will uh, point out some default material that you can use. But from my own knowledge, I suppose, which isn't, you know, I'm not the knower of all things. Uh, I couldn't find a way to do it without um, without it being unlit, which, you know, you you might not want if, if 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 you have an example where it's raining bullets or something in a realistic game. You probably don't want those bullets to look like they're sort of something out of a cartoon. You want to have the full PBR uh, stuff going on. So that's about it. I've rambled on for too long already. This is just supposed to be a quick little tip. So um, thank you for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.